stop in this lovely Kaikoura trip was Nin's Bin. Usually a Kaimoana video ends with the fish. It begins today. Oh, pray from Nin's Bin. And we're going to power dive tonight. We didn't dive straight away because the low tide was late at night, so the only chance we had to dive was really on the mid tide, which was going to be around 7 to 8 o'clock at night. As I talk through this video, I'm going to be addressing some specific dangers attributed to diving. There is danger to what we do, and there's one very specific environmental danger that you really need to know about. It's towards the end of the video, so I would encourage you to keep watching. Clipping on my MPI knife there to my weight belt. This is the maiden voyage of the little Kaiwaka ET, little float boat. What such a fantastic little thing. Little do I realize it in this early part of the dive, but my proximity to the power is a long way off. I'm honestly nowhere near it, so my power proximity at this point is cold. And it seems to be customary that the first thing that I find is always an empty power shell. I don't know, it's just I always seem to find the shell first. Maybe that's the same for everybody. Okay, the first danger we're going to talk about, and that is getting tangled. Right here, this, is a, this was scary. My foot was tangled in the float rope. Now, this is why it's a good idea to carry a dive knife with you. You can either carry one on your belt or uh, um, sometimes your wetsuit will have like a side pocket pouch for you to carry a dive knife. Now your dive knife is not your power knife. It's not that plastic knife. It's uh, a sharp knife in that you can use to cut yourself free from anything you're tangled in, which is mainly going to be your float line. Uh, or anything else, like if you use fishing line in there, and if you're spear fishing, you'll use that knife to um, stab the fish in the head to, um, you know, put the fish down. And slowly getting closer to the power here, but still a long way off. As I look over on the surface of the water, I see that Ying is holding onto that float boat and I can see the early stages of panic are setting in. She's in about three to four meters of water there. She's not used to being in water that's, you know, over the old head. She doesn't have all that much dive experience, so I've got to head on over, see that she's okay, calm her down a little bit, and then actually tow her back in on that float boat. Go back into the shallow water where you can stand up. Uh, 
Can I rest here for a while? Where are we going? So one of the things that I like to practice when I'm just doing swimming practice is to actually lie on the surface of the water as if I'm really, really tired and just rest whilst lying on the surface of the water face down, you know, breathing through my snorkel. Because if you find yourself in deep water and you get tired, you don't want to panic. You want to be able to just rest until you can start swimming away to safety. Just have a dive around here, okay. where it's shallow, okay. and then you can stand up. You're so much better up here. Oh. But do you think there are some here, like yeah. on the bottom? I've already pulled up about four or five, but they're all small. They're not big. They're small. So we're in the shallow water now, and I'm looking around the shallow water, and oh geez, it's the same problem. I just cannot find anything. Little do I realize though, I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. I don't know it yet, but I am. But still, I'm not finding anything, so I head back in, I take a weight off of my weight belt, and there's another diver there, so I talk to the other diver. I get the feeling this place has been picked clean already. Yeah. Yeah. How far out? Not far. It's just at the end of that kelp. Yeah. But like straight out from you. Oh yeah. Just go along the kelp. It gets pretty deep before it gets about uh, two or three meters deep. So you don't have to go deep on the side of the wall. Yeah. There's a wall that runs along that kelp. Yeah. I went over there as well because I normally just come out here and check and then go but there's nothing here. Yeah. 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 You know, you don't want to succumb to peer pressure. As I'm here and I'm in about three to four meters of water. I'm thinking back to some of these YouTube comments that I've seen. That's people telling me, get crayfish and dive deeper. So I think to myself, all right, all right, let's 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 get down there, let's have a go. And I dive down into some deeper water. Unfortunately, just nothing, still nothing. Oh, she's not looking too good. I mean, the water is a bit murky. And it's a bit deep. And I'm already tired. And I ain't got any yet. It'll be a victory if I can get one. So as I keep searching, I actually find this rock wall that the uh, other diver was talking about. So the depth goes from about one and a half meters suddenly down to about four meters. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, maybe there's something along this rock wall. And earlier on in the dive here, I did have uh, a little bit too much weight on me and I was, you know, getting down and then I was very, very slow coming back up, you know, uncomfortably slow getting back up. Especially for me, I'm not really an advanced level diver at all. I barely even call myself an intermediate level diver. And yeah, being tired and being down under four meters of water with a little bit too much weight, it's a bit scary. So I decide to head to the shallow water and I start heading towards the rocks, which is where the seals are. I can hear them. I know that they're there. I don't realize that there's a whole bunch of them, but I start heading over to that shallower water. And little do I realize I'm getting very close. I think it's time to call it. Uh, 
I'm just naked. I am naked. Don't push yourself too hard when you're doing this, eh? I already had to take one weight off of my weight belt because I was sort of sinking down a bit. You know, it's unsafe. Get down easy and then you're tired and getting back up. Oh. Yeah, no. Time to head back in. We'll have another go tomorrow. And right as I have given up and I'm heading back in, oh my goodness, look. There they are. I've been searching and searching, and there they are. Whoa. Poor little Kaiwaka Iti keeps getting turned over and I keep having to flip him back up the other way. The float line also came loose from little Kaiwaka Iti and I'm thinking, oh, whoa, whoa, what's this? The carabiner clip is loose. And I think, okay, don't panic. That Kaiwaka is going to be around here somewhere, not far away because the seaweed will be holding it in place. And there we go, get it and attach it back on. Well, right when I was about to get out, stumbled upon a few of them. Oh, I'm a bit knackered. Oh, but we got some power. Whew, in the Kai Waka Iti. With five power now in the Kaiwaka, let's head back. We, it is finally, finally time to have a rest. And there is one last significant environmental danger that I haven't really been aware of. And Coco was about to warn me about it. Baby seals? Yeah. She's just warned me about all the seals. There is not just one young seal there. There is many, many young seals there. And that's scary because where there are young baby seals, there are angry, protective adults. Have a listen. You can hear them in the background. Well, 
it ended up a lot better than I thought. I was lucky enough to find a good patch, a good patch of power here. And oh man, oh seriously, had to put in the work on this one. Oh, I mean, I gave up, thought nothing, nothing. Spent like half an hour out there and nothing. And then at the last minute, as I'm coming in, there they are, the whole big group of them. Whew, yeah. Hey, it's Pacific Jewels. Did you know that they, for a fee, will grind down and polish your power shell for you? Let's go have a look, see if we can get one polished. Pacific Jewels is on the main road in Kaikoura and they have an epic little shop there. They will grind down your power shell or if you haven't got one, you can just buy them. They've got a whole bunch of them there for sale.